I was super excited for the opportunity to blather on about my struggles. <laughs> so I think charts are really cool. So I went Googling around and I found uh, Sophie who teaches at the Flatiron School in uh, New York City. So she's awesome because um, she has these two apps, one in Rails, which I'm also trying to learn, and one in Ember, which I want to learn. And they work really well together, it's a classic thing. And they ask me anything for, you need a budget, why now? They say that they use a Rails back end with an Ember front end, and that's a beautiful, beautiful app. So I played with it, and I got it running on my laptop, and I got super excited, and here I am. So the app goes out and scrapes this existing body of work um, for the Doctor Who universe and lets you noodle around and here's a static screenshot with those fabulous ember things in it and if I go over here here it is running actual live on uh, my laptop and it's pretty easy and straightforward to do that which is exciting um, and I think that there's security where you can't delete something and if you go back to the seasons you'll get an ember chart like this. Now, I would love to show you how to make this a hierarchical ember chart where you can scroll in and it'll tell you about the episodes where the Daleks are in, but I didn't get that far. So, oh well. Yes. You can ask me if I'm, if, if I'm still uh, exercising uh, and uh, whether I've improved this thing. So, so you read a blog post. It's a really nice, short blog post. And it turns out, if you actually put in the appropriate URL, you can get clone it, go in there, npm install, power install, and ember serve, and it's going to work right out of the box, which is really nice, even though it's pointing at her Heroku instance, and then you feel sad because you're like using her Heroku money. So you get your own server, and uh, it's been a while since I uh, installed Rails, so I really don't remember how to do it. I think it had something to do with uh, RVM and doing that, and then after that it's, it's easy. For me, I just checked it out, and I went into the directory and did a bundle and everything worked. And uh, actually that wasn't true. Did a bundle, it failed on the PG gem, because I didn't have Postgres running, so this postgresapp.com is this lovely Postgres for uh, lazy Macintosh users. Um, it's also used by, by hard working Macintosh users as well. All right, so the server was very, very easy to get running, um, straightforward stuff. And then after that, you need to uh, read Sophie's README that sort of describes the places where the URL is buried and you need to waste a good five, ten minutes because you didn't change the HTTPS into HTTP when you went to localhost. That's a gotcha that burnt me. And then after that, things are great. So, so then we have Sophie's blog. And Sophie's blog says, hey, I didn't use D3 straight. I used Ember charts. So did a Ember install uh, Ember charts. And then you fill this in and it's going to expect the data to be in bubble data. What does that data look like? Standard D3 kinds of data. Here's the abstract copy and paste from Sophie's blog and the specific copy and paste from her blog. You might say to yourself, well, I watch a lot of Doctor Who and there aren't that many Daleks. There just, there just aren't that many. That's because she uh, multiplied things a bit in order to scale them on the server side because that was quick and easy for her. So, if you go look at Adpar's Ember charts, you'll see that it's open source on GitHub. And you'll also see that there's a very nice um, JS bin of it. JS bin is a wonderful, wonderful thing, except when you load HTTP resources and you're talking to JS bin through HTTPS, in which case the security people take your birthday away for a good five or ten minutes. <laughs> so uh, there was another thing that I wanted to mention. There's this guy who I've never met that I also found through my little uh, searching that has some really, really amazing stuff. He has this series of talks. Um, with examples that are really beautiful that I haven't worked through yet. Oh, and if so, afterwards, if someone wants to tell me 
why I can't access the API in my web browser. I have a suspicion that it has to do with media types. That would be good to know. And Sam's stuff is not there. Sam's stuff is here. He gives away his stuff on GitHub. And he has this really nice little D3 Ember thing that's very impressive. It would be perfect if it just had a Rails backend. But this is standalone. So it's not nearly as exciting. And five minutes and 47 seconds, which leaves an entire 10 for questions <laughs> or after the meeting. Thank you very much. And I, tweet, I tweeted Sam's URL, which is, uh, also leads you to a YouTube talk that's quite nice. So I hope you mess around with it because it's uh, really nifty. And uh, sorry I didn't have any concrete D3ness for you. Any questions for Matt? All right.